you for tuning in today to our Impart podcast. My name is Dana Almaguire, and I'll be your host today. We have two guests joining us from Ability New Brunswick, and I'll start us off by briefly introducing each of them. So I have joining me here Haley Floro. Haley Floro has more than 25 years of management and administration experience in nonprofit and community-based sectors. A leader in health and disability advocacy, she has been making her mark in communities across New Brunswick as Ability New Brunswick's executive director since 2006. Haley is a community builder, a published author, as well as a dedicated advocate for persons living with mobility disability, youth, seniors, and persons living in poverty. Haley Flaro serves on several government committees and boards related to poverty, social assistance, employment, health, and disability. Among others, Haley is a vice chairperson of WorkSafe NB, chairperson of the Accessible Canada Outdoor Spaces Technical Committee, a board member for the Institute of Research on Public Policy, and a member of the Ocean Allies Diversity and Inclusion Advisory Committee. So welcome, Haley. Thank you. Um, Glad to be here. I also have uh, George Woodworth joining us, so father of two boys. For C5 spinal cord injury, George worked as a carpenter, part-time sheriff, and a co-owner of a 14-bed special care home. George always enjoyed working with wood, so after his injury, he converted his woodworking shop and began producing cutting boards, serving trays, transfer boards, and other simple wooden products. Currently, he serves as a patient experience advisor with Horizon Health, and he is also the past president of Ability New Brunswick. So welcome, George. Um, so our topic today will be in regard to the journey that patients go through and organizations within the community that come into play and become of assistance and support. You know, we want to be able to hear any concerns, any feedback, and really the point of view of the other side of what we usually hear. So what are our patients going through and how is their journey going? Um, so just a little bit about the organization we are hosting today. Ability New Brunswick is a community-based provincial nonprofit organization headquartered in Fredericton, New Brunswick. This organization is the go-to source for support for people with a mobility disability in New Brunswick, and it is funded through the Provincial Department of Social Development. I won't go into too much detail here on what I read online, but instead I'd like Haley to chime in and give us a better overview. Um, so Haley, how did Ability New Brunswick come to where it is now? Thank you. So we, we're actually in our 67th year of delivering uh, services with and on behalf of people with a mobility disability in New Brunswick. We were founded by veterans uh, 67 years ago who didn't mm -hmm. want to spend the rest of their life in hospital when they were facing injuries. So we started as a grassroots initiative. We very much continue to be grassroots boots on the ground uh, organization, but we've evolved over the years. You know, we started with volunteers and um, over the last 67 years, we've grown to now 26 staff that provide a variety of programs and services around the province and you know our mission without reading the big complex statement is really about supporting the independence um, and mobility of people with a mobility disability throughout New Brunswick uh, rural urban um, all demographics to help people be more as independent as possible and active in our communities wow, that's amazing yeah um, is it true that the organization uh, has undergone several name changes and rebranding? And, and if so, could you elaborate on the reasons behind these changes and how they reflect on the organization's growth? Excellent. Yes. Yeah, so we, we went through one name change uh, in 2011 after a lot of pressure from the people we work with, who we refer to the people with a mobility disability we work with as service participants. Um, there was a lot of pressure to change our name to something more inclusive and welcoming. We were formally called the Canadian Paraplegic Association New Brunswick, which is is at was accurate, but you know had a very negative connotation to it. And someone with a mobility condition as a result of a stroke or um, mm -hmm. you know that that maybe was uh, dealing with tetraplegia, which shows a spinal cord injury impacting all limbs, or someone that was able to walk with a spinal cord injury, or someone with 
with multiple cirrhosis might not have identified with that. So uh, we went out to our service participants and asked them to help rename. And the common theme was ability. People mm -hmm. wanted to um, wanted to be able to be told about an organization that focused on ability and potential. And so that's how we came up with it. And people, many people were worried. I'm sure our board was at the time that it might be confusing for people. But in one year at the time in 2011, it resulted in our referrals increasing sixfold because of the positivity of the name. So uh, that was that story. Absolutely. Yeah. George, were you involved um, when it was Ability Envy or were you there before that? I came in um, right when we were going through the name change. Okay. We disengaged from uh, the Canadian Paraplegic Association, and and uh, I, I, I was I was very thankful when that process came to an end and we became what we are. Mm -hmm, absolutely. Um, Haley, I know you mentioned a little bit on you know what the, what your mission is. Um, how does the organization aim to be you know the, the voice for those with uh, for persons with mobility disability? And feel free to share any personal anecdotes or insights or things that you've heard from um, from persons with mobility disability. Well, we're an evidence-based organization, so as much as we have lots of gifts and talents around the employee and board table, uh, every year we conduct research. We hold an annual uh, service participant survey to, you know, evaluate the satisfaction and impact with our services, but we also ask people uh, throughout New Brunswick with a mobility disability, what are the issues that they would like to see us address as an organization, including, you know, we let them know that we work with governments, so what things do they want us pushing for, and, and you know, every year year we get our marching orders. Right now it's to focus on affordable accessible housing and accessible transportation and you know access to reliable home support workers. So um, very much we do a lot of engagement and consultations so our policy initiatives are focused on on you know the right uh, government program services policies that we want change but that our service delivery is responsive. So uh, mm -hmm. you know five years ago we started getting a lot of pressure from our service participants to implement implement a peer mentorship program. I can, as George will attest, I can yammer on all day about, you know, disability and disability supports, but I don't live with a mobility disability. My mom did, and that has some value to sharing that story. But when you can talk to someone who's been there, and, and George is a perfect example of this, when you can talk to someone else that's lived through the same diagnosis, same injury, has tips and tricks, can share how they overcame roadblocks, um, there is nothing like it. So uh, mm -hmm. we use the consultation with our population to push for that program, which is now in place. Okay. Wow. Yeah, that's a great way to get feedback. Um, what programs and services do you provide at Ability New Brunswick? We, uh, we're we growing so fast, I need shades, I think, George. I might forget a few, but uh, we we have a, a full slate of programs and services. We have a transition MB program, which focuses on helping youth with a mobility disability transition to uh, training, jobs, post-secondary education. We have a rehabilitation counseling program for adults, which helps adult, adults with a mobility disability reach their goals for housing, transportation, employment, education, sexuality. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, whatever their self-identified goals are. And then we have a seniors navigation service, which works with older adults over the age of 55. We're not there yet, George. And uh, we, oh. uh, <laughs> uh, that that helps with planning and navigation to reach goals because disability with, with age does come disability. And we have lots of people with a disability that are aging. So uh, mm -hmm. that program has been something real important. We have the peer mentorship program. Mm -hmm. We have our para and B sport and recreation program which uh, you know it provides um, connections for people with adapted sport and recreation and events and uh, we're fortunate to have an adapted sport and recreation equipment loan service um, one of the things our, our service participants told us is that adapted sport and recreation equipment's expensive mm -hmm. uh, Danny you and I can go get a pair of skates today for $150 but if George would like to skate and use a sledge it's going to be about $1,200 $1,300 mm -hmm. and no private insurance nor 
government programs will pay for that. So we lend though that type of equipment to people for free throughout the province mm -hmm. to help them get active. We have information requests. We have our accessible MB program where we give free accessibility reviews to businesses. And I'm going to stop there, but wow, our website so a, has a, quite a bit. The list goes on and on. That's that's amazing though, right? That's those are great things. Um, how does uh, someone get access to those? Do you is it a referral program or is it? And um, George, feel free to chime in here too. Like, how did you, you know, come into play? Oh well, that's a story in its own. Um, after after I got hurt out hunting uh, in 2007, and after I came to uh, after I got to Stan Cassidy, are, are we going to share, Haley? Absolutely. Okay. It's, it's basically he's asking if he can make fun of me and you know I'm I'm used to this. <laughs> this lady Haley named Haley started coming in to see me every couple of weeks or something I don't remember the you know and talking about you know how great life was going to be after I had settled in afterwards and I you know I just I, I was I was at the point that you know I didn't I didn't want to hear it I I had lost all of my uh independence and mobility and you know I, I i was i was in a pretty dark place she started talking about driving which i love to do and uh i was like lady they don't let people like me drive you know like i, I can barely control my wheelchair going down the hall and uh but you know i, I through through uh after i got out of, of stan cassidy 11 months later i access the uh what is that what's that program called the vehicle retrofit program yeah the vehicle retrofit yeah. program and had my had hand controls put in my car and and uh i bought a grand prix and and uh drove for years i until i i lost the function in my left arm in 2019 and so that's a, a great example of George got linked to us through a direct referral mm -hmm. with the Stan Cassie Center for Rehabilitation. Right. Um, but people can call our toll free number, can email us, look us on Facebook, and uh, we'll respond within two days and, and give them information on uh, how they can register for our services. And we'll take a look at what services are the best for them. So, but we rely, as George mentioned, on our partnerships with rehabilitation units, uh, mm -hmm. the Stan Cassie Center for Rehabilitation, the New Brunswick Extramural Program is one. One of the largest referral sources for us and you mentioned in the onset social development is one of our funders so is department of health uh, so is education mm -hmm. early childhood so is post-secondary education training right. and labor we have different funding partnerships for programs and and those organizations refer regularly to us too okay okay and Thank many you for that, years yeah. I've, I've you know given out our number and name to people at, at the mall in food court you know that i run into <laughs> Or someone that I've run into on the bus or mm -hmm. you know, in different places. Uh, that's great. Um, so we know that there's always going to be a change in the way that we provide medical services. Um, so how has Ability New Brunswick adapted its services to meet the changing needs and the advancements in medical and in rehabilitation services? Or did you find that you had to adapt to some sort of change over the years? of services. We certainly have. We we spend a lot of time education, educating ourselves about new technology, new treatments, um, you know, uh, things that are on uh, on the horizon. And it's not that we're clinicians, but uh, we want to be aware of the latest so we can coach our service participants to talk to their specialist, to talk to the adaptive driving service, to talk to an occupational therapist, to, mm -hmm. to get mental health support. So, um, you know, we, we've really adapted our services. When I came in 17 years ago, we were an urban phenomenon most of our service participants were in mm -hmm. urban communities and that wasn't because that's where the people were uh, now it's almost more people that we're serving are living in rural areas and that's in direct response of our board you know making decisions to stop investing in office infrastructure because people didn't want to come to us they wanted us to sit at the kitchen table sit in the mm -hmm. rehab unit and mm -hmm. see what their real life is like so we can mm -hmm. help them um, plan navigate 
mitigate, et cetera. So that was one of the best decisions. Why were we going to invest in, in large infrastructure? Um, we were way ahead of the pandemic. The pandemic was hard for us, believe me. Mm -hmm. There was times where we were like, let's lay people off and lay low. And uh, that just wasn't an option for the staff. They know people needed our help. And so, you know, a few weeks after the onset of the state of emergency, we had lawn chairs and trunks and masks and disinfected. And we were sitting in the in the door yards, right? Uh, yeah. Uh, distancing but doing what we can and and that's been our outreach model for years so the pandemic mm -hmm. was something we were able to adapt to because of our model of being at the kitchen table being in the door yard right. um, and uh, focusing on outreach wow okay that's a, that's a great way to still be involved um, with persons with mobility disability during that time too because that was a barrier to everybody right we couldn't even go into the hospital until it was a complete emergency it so. is. And we had beautiful partnerships like we had, you know, national partnerships and food security organizations giving mm -hmm. us food gift cards to give people. We had the Department of Health giving us testing kits so we could get them out to people that couldn't mm -hmm. get out to get them and had workers coming in and out. Like there was a lot of really magical partnerships. And when we needed things for people, we would put calls out on our social media and the community mm -hmm. came through. So, um, yeah, they, they, the pandemic was tough. Uh, you know, we keep calling it, I think, weeks six we all hit a wall here and thought can we keep doing this but the energy passion and and people's you know thankfulness that we were answering phones and following yeah. up and being there um was all we needed to to kind of figure out how could we do things and help people because mm -hmm. during the pandemic our population is already quite isolated many of them and the pandemic made it even more isolating and mm -hmm. so um you know a family wasn't available for support uh they home support worker shortages all of those things mm -hmm. so not being able to go out to go to community activities or sports or recreation or hug people and so mm -hmm. um, it was extremely isolating for our population so we knew we needed to be there right uh, you mentioned community you know the community came through during that time and so how is community involvement a priority like uh, ability new brunswick is described as a community-based organization so you know, how do you um, engage with local communities and, and foster inclusivity? It, and just in so many ways, like right now we're working so positively with employers that are getting accessibility reviews because they mm -hmm. know that accessibility is good for business. It's good to get customers and it's good for community engagement. Um, we often reach out the community. We rely on on donations. We're a provincial nonprofit. Some people think we're 100% government funded and that could be farther from the truth. You know, we rely on donations and partnerships with major corporations. And so, um, you know, we've been even celebrating lots of small partnerships lady, lately we have a, a real estate agent that's giving us a component of a, amount off every sale like it, those things add up and and they help invest in our programs and and then we put calls out for you know we recently needed had a, a senior that was getting his first to him you know apartment getting off the street and he needed a bed mattress and he couldn't afford one and so we put a call out on social media and the community came through how many of us have things in our basement or in our back mm -hmm. hall that we could share so um um, it's just really right. rich how people support us and it's not mm -hmm. people think nonprofits it's all about money but sometimes it's the gift of things to help lift people up because uh, um, I don't want to speak for George but living with a disability is costly you know even oh. if people have oh. insurance or provincial government support or there's co-payments there's a across-the-counter modification modifica um, medications and supplements and there's mm -hmm. co-payments for different government programs and uh, I already mentioned that there's small assistive technology that aren't covered by anyone like reachers and adapted cups and cooking utensils and all of these things. And I don't mean to trivialize it and George can speak better to it, but it doesn't matter your income level. Living with a disability is costly uh, mm -hmm. and uh, for everyone. And um, unfortunately, a lot of our government programs don't consider the cost of disability when mm -hmm. they're tr when they're they're providing funding to people. So mm -hmm. it puts people people are either, either even farther in debt like our parallel transit systems cost d twice the amount of our standard transportation system and yet the amount given for transportation is the same uh you know mm -hmm. when people look at provincial programs that doesn't mm -hmm. make sense it's, right. it's inequi inequitable right 
Yeah, definitely. Is that something that the organization um, would look to um, help in or, you know, put a new like mission in to aid or, you know, like um, any sorts of assistance there? We are working. George won't be surprised that I'm chatty Kathy today, but he'll uh, he'll jump in. <laughs> we so the policy initiatives help us get there. We you know I mentioned during COVID we were able to get partnerships to give people a hand up with gift cards, mm -hmm. but that really is a band aid. It's meaningful to people, and we're glad mm -hmm. to do it. But we know at the same time that we do things like that that we need to be advocating for the Canada Disability Benefit, which has gone through Parliament, and now we need to make sure it gets out to yes. Canadians and has the right eligibility so uh, that is you know um it, it's actually a big advantage to the disability community everyone wants uh you know everyone the you hear all over the place that people want living wages and every government is afraid to touch it well this has been the push of the disability community to pilot a living wage with people with a disability that are one of the two most impoverished groups in our province so mm -hmm. it's a huge victory it's not done yet but our board has submitted briefs and advocated because it's very important to us to address right. the poverty and equity faced by people with a disability. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, George, I'm going to move on uh, to you for a little bit here. Um, if you don't mind just sharing some personal thoughts or I guess the journey of your experience within the organization and its leadership, you know, like what were things that were impactful and others that you thought, you know, maybe, hey, I need this and how can I go about bringing this to their attention if it wasn't provided? Um, yeah. I'm, I'm going to start with my the first time I met Courtney Keenan. Um, I was at the Stan Cassidy Center, um, and I I was I had been there for about probably three months, and I was sit, sitting in the gym, and uh, this guy in a wheelchair rolls in with a big silly grin on his face, and I thought, what does he have to be so happy about? He's in a wheelchair, you know, and uh, I, 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 he rolled, he rolled right over to me and asked me, you know, what my name was and, and in, introduced himself. And, and that was my first, um, experience with, with a peer mentor and Courtney is a, a peer mentor to me today. You know, I, I thought, well, if he's happy in a chair, you know, maybe I can be too, you know, what's, what's, what's his secret to to happiness and uh you know Court, courtney's now married and, and has just had his second baby wow. you know it, it's great mm -hmm. um i so i I've, I've always been a uh pushing for the the peer mentorship program that we just that we just start, uh piloted and um I was a board member for years and years and years, and then they decided I needed to be at the top of the food chain as, as president for a couple of years, and and we uh, we all endured that, and uh, we came through COVID fine, and and uh, did our you know board meetings online and and uh, through Skype and um, Steve Stephen is now the president. Um, we've, and I'm obviously past president and we're, uh, vetting new, um, candidates for the, for the board and going through that process to, you know, to keep our, our board diverse and, and well-rounded out. Um, I guess that's where we are now. Yeah. Were there any challenges that you uh, faced when you first became involved with the organization and did any of that impact your life or impact your day to day? What do you mean as obstacles as in? Any challenges that you face in terms of like, let's say, um, you know, you were looking for a service that wasn't provided or maybe COVID hit. And, you know, we mentioned that, you know, it, it was kind of a barrier, but then you guys came through and the community came through and helped out. Oh. COVID and, and 
A building in New Brunswick, we aced it as far as I'm concerned. Um, I think the things they helped me with, uh, the cost of groceries just skyrocketed. Um, you know, so I, I found that I, I you know, I, I live on a fi very fixed income and uh, I, I found that I was, you know, eating things that I didn't necessarily care for uh, because of things that I could afford. Mm -hmm. uh, they helped me get some adapted equipment so it, it mm -hmm. wasn't so painful for me to use my laptop and, and talk to people and entertain myself and, mm -hmm. and stuff like that, yeah. That's great. Um, do you think those moments like supported you or you felt empowered? Because those are the programs uh, or sorry, the organizations like initiatives and, you know, what they aim to do. Were those some of the moments that you felt empowered or are there other moments that you felt you were really supported by Ability New Brunswick, even the peer mentorship program that you mentioned? Um, I, I really feel that Ability New Brunswick is is an organization that always has my back um you know if if i've if i've exhausted all of my uh efforts and and there's still something that i i need to get done that that i need help with um i'll give Haley a call and and get my file opened up again and uh and you know we'll find a way to get what i need um you know like i'm, I'm just i'm setting up my woodworking shop uh, for the second time after having been through a divorce and having to move and not have my work wood shop, you know, open for a couple of years. Um, but, you know, you know, getting it set up again. And, and I know if, if I, if I need, if I need funding for something or, uh, you know, I can't get it in any other way, I'm sure that, you know, through ability, we can, we can find a solution. That's great. Um, has the organization helped you connect or have you had more connections with others who share similar experiences? Do you think you've had more of a chance to do that through the organization? Yeah, I was uh, introduced to, to rugby uh, through ability through one of our have a go. On. What That's so nice. our, one of our adapted sport and recreation events. Yeah, we always are doing different things. They've had different names, uh, George, so you're right on track. Yeah. Um, for, and and Co Courtney was always nagging me to, mm -hmm. you know, come on, try it out, try it out. And, I, you know, I was like, Courtney, I can barely push my wheelchair. I'm not going to be able to push a rugby chair. So, and, you know, we were at one at one of those events one time and and uh, he said, oh, come on, try it. So I tried it and I loved it. Yeah. So he gave you that I, extra push to. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I, I played until I, I I had nerve compression in my neck and and lost the function of my arm. Um, so, yeah, I'm I'm I feel like I'm always supported by ability. Right. Um, have you, uh, like looking ahead, do you, like, what are your aspirations or, or hopes for your future? And, and does Ability New Brunswick come into or factor into those plans? Like, I know you mentioned your woodworking um, shop that you're starting now and that, you know, um, if you were to need any help and funding and et cetera, you know, you'd feel like they have your back and they'd um, help you out. But, uh, yeah. Um, well, I... Uh... I'm I'm very proud to say that uh, ability is is always uh, has an upcoming order for cutting boards and stuff that I make um, that we that we gift to our the people that we have meetings with and uh, stuff. So yeah, I I uh, I'm, I'm I guess I'm pr I'm I'm proud to be a partner I guess with ability. That's great. That's great, George. Um, how do you think your experiences and your journey can inspire others who might be going through a similar situation? And um, yeah. And even like what advice would you give to someone who's uh, facing challenges similar to what you've experienced? Um, well, 
I guess life is what you make it. Um, living with a disability isn't isn't necessarily always fun, but it's never boring. Um, I've got, I guess, my slogan tattooed on my arm is roll with it. You know, uh, I've also got uh, abilities uh, logo right there at the end of it. Uh, tattooed at the end of my at the slogan, but uh, um, yeah, life 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 is different after you uh, you know acquire a disability, but uh, it's still life. Absolutely, um, Haley. So we we all know that you know having a patient partner is is crucial, and um, I just want to get your perspective of how has having George be part of the team impacted uh, persons with with mobility disability coming through, or um, you know ha has there been different initiatives since you've had that patient partner or patient advocate? Yeah, from the the health system perspective, definitely patient advocate. The um, it, it's just incredible. Our board is very unique in that we've have a long time bylaw that um, while our board members need to, and George is the chair of our nomination committee, so he's very busy right now. Uh, the uh, reviewing applications, but uh, the um, the board is they have to meet a you have to have skill set, governance, experience, leadership, public relations, finance, like, like all of those things. But fifty percent of our board also um, must identify as living with a mobility disorder disability and that flips the script like that we don't do anything that's not evidence-based uh, I get the great privilege of being a face for this organization um, daily um, and you know sometimes the people think that you know it's Haley's organization it, it really isn't um, it's really evidence-based you know we make decisions about what strategic direction we're going in the board was very animate um, at our fall strategic planning meeting about the need to focus on affordable accessible housing so that was my marching orders for myself and the team to look at policies programs that make the best economic and social sense to get more housing accessible housing available so um, I that lived experience is essential um, the lived experience of my mother is the reason why I, I am a lifer in this nonprofit world I, mm -hmm. I I really love to be part of something that has impact so um, we, we you just can't do anything without it because there's a a lot of great people out there that have a lot of great ideas and very passionate ideas but I see way too many programs developed because of passion and not lived experience and then no mm -hmm. one shows up so Absolutely. you know what people show up for our programs people evaluate them uh, in a you know in a very positive way and and that to me means we're getting it right Absolutely. Those are great points, uh, Haley. Um, what are some of the like key goals and uh, or just the goals that Ability New Friends like, has in the coming years? So I know you've just mentioned affordable housing. Are there other um, projects or goals that um, the organization is planning to um, achieve? Yeah, in our new strategic plan, we're really or focusing on our organizational re resilience, um, our organizational mental health, because mm -hmm. it, this is a t this is a tough line of work. You know, George, as a peer mentor, can attest. We're constantly hearing people's traumas and helping them work through them. And so, you know, we it, it's a it's a sector that has a high burnout rate. So we're really focusing on our resilience, our financial stability, but most importantly, when it and so if we're working on those things, we're helping more people. So those are fundamental, but on the policy lens, affordable, accessible housing, access to home support workers, these are all really critical things and, and making sure that the Canada, the Canada disability benefit comes to fruition. I, I might just retire when that comes through because I think that's going to be the best possible living wage for people that are not able to work due to health reasons. So, mm -hmm. um, and it will actually, you know, it'll actually bring some equity, um, you know, to people that, as I said, 
uh, you know, it, it's not fair, uh, the current social assistance rates for people with a disability, you, you can't mm-hmm. live on it, you can't find accessible housing, you can't pay co-payments. And so those mm-hmm. are really important aspects for us. But programs are accessible and be programmed to help employers mm-hmm. and our communities become more accessible. And our peer mentorship program are really big priorities to bring mm-hmm. to bring uh, over the goal line and beyond. So absolutely um does WorkSafe and be um collaborator have any big collaborations within the organization since you know some may have to stop working due to um an incident that occurs um so would they be able to you know assist with the Canada disability um Benefit. fund or do they not come into play um, it, it's really interesting. I'm actually the vice chair of WorkSafe New Brunswick, yeah, that's, so that's yeah. an interesting question. They have a partnership, not formally with us, but I, I'm the vice chair of the organization. But um, actually, on a day-to-day basis, we do work with injured workers. So we mm-hmm. would work with case managers, occupational therapists, and the compensation system system to help people work towards their goals if they were injured at work. So mm-hmm. there's definitely that one-on-one relationship there. Um, everyone, you know, and George can attest to this, everyone's goals and plans and needs are so unique and 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 the systems that they have access to if it was an injury if it was a lawsuit if they it was a car accident there's just so many different supports if they're persons of veteran if they're mm-hmm. eligible for first nation and you'd health benefit like there's so many programs and so navigating that um, it doesn't matter we don't income test people for our service and mm-hmm. there are no boundaries in new brunswick we work with indigenous communities on and off reserve like there we we don't have any lines in our province of, of who we work with and how. Okay. I know I only mentioned that because um, I think so at Canadian Health Solutions um, and at UMB, there's a partnership going on there that I'm briefly involved in, and it's for occupational transitioning for um, patients who have gone through a spinal cord injury or um, any uh, traumatic accident that they have to change their, you know, their, their occupation because they can no longer meet the requirements or the, um, you know, if they're in construction and whatnot. So it's often you, you need that transition um, to be still be able to work because it impacts, it's, it's a holistic point of view of a patient or a, or a person. Um, but I don't know if it's gone anywhere yet or, um, but uh, yeah. The the challenges facing our current health system are not lost on our board and staff. You know, it's it's a very stressful experience now, and we have to even step up what we're doing to help coach people Mm -hmm. to get the right services, ask the right questions, ask for referrals to specialists, you know, push to get the right care uh, because of the the chaos that our our health system is experiencing. And one thing that worries me is that when you have a stressed health system, things like community engagement, uh, involvement of people with lived experience fall off. Those are the Mm -hmm. easy things to cut. And unfortunately, they're the most important things Mm -hmm. to think about. Um, So Mm -hmm. I I guess that would be our, uh, George can correct me if I'm off board policy. Here, but uh, I think those would be the things that we're talking about the most with respect to to health systems and, and the engagement of people with disabilities, because uh, training of workers and engagement mm-hmm. of people patient experience is the things that get put aside when there's crisis. So there's so many more important reasons to fix our health crisis, but day to day we're still some of our basic work is helping people find family doctors and nurse practitioners and get involved mm-hmm. in clinics and registering them for patients. And connect and I'm talking really fast because that's, because that's what we're doing and right. and uh, you know if 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 there was better access to primary care we mm-hmm. can help people with other goals but mm-hmm. every day people are are saying like I have no family doctor I'm having these secondary health complications I think I have infection I went to the emerge I was there 14 hours like and and these are worrisome because we're seeing people part of me 14 hours that's quick. 14 was was quick. <laughs> oh. Yeah, it's- come on. I'm trying to be optimistic, George. But so I think in the, the current health system, I, you know, I, I hope that we can get to some equilibrium. So the engagement of patients and families will will uh, be elevated again um, so we can design better programs, services and mm-hmm. uh, yeah. Absolutely. OK. Um, 
for our listeners, I guess both of you can uh, add in for our listeners who are interested in supporting or getting involved with Ability New Brunswick. Uh, what are some ways they can contribute or participate? Well, I would I'll say the board. <laughs> I would say the board of directors, but you know what? We've always had a wait list for the board. The board um, this year decided to go out just with some call for applications to see mm -hmm. if we can get some additional interest from some of our buckets, you know, Northern New Brunswick and, mm -hmm. and different. And uh, you got, I, I, I have to say I'm a governance guru and I know executive directors aren't supposed to be involved in the process. So I haven't been, George can attest to that, but him and his nomination committee had a lot of applications and they're currently Okay. scheduling interviews so I don't think they're accepting any more right now because I think they have like 10 interviews oh, yeah. to do for okay. you know four positions but uh in other ways to get involved is follow us on social media because we're constantly putting out calls for things we need from little things to big things and mm -hmm. and like I said none of us uh, realize what we have in our basement until they see ability and be ask for you know some gently used bed sheets for someone mm -hmm. that's got their first apartment so uh that's really important to follow us there too um and uh, we're always looking for volunteers to help us in Fredericton at our adapted equipment loan storage you know we, we can only get George and his woodshop skills for so many hours uh, you know to help us out and give us advice so we're always looking people to change tires and fix bolts and what is the WD-40 I don't know you can tell I don't put enough hours <laughs> in over there but uh, those are some things anyone that's retired and looking to uh, you know uh, to do some of that work or not retired we're always looking for people to help us keep that equipment safe clean maintained um, so we can get it out quicker. Perfect. Yeah, it's great. We'll uh, we'll be sure to post some stuff too about that and, and reshare all of your guys's uh, posts to get more reach. Um, are there any upcoming events or campaigns that you'd like to highlight that are happening? Good question. Events or campaigns? Nothing specific. I I think a lot of our campaigns, um, our, our primary campaign lately has been getting the message out to employers about our three-year pilot to do free accessibility reviews of businesses. It's confidential. We don't embarrass anyone. If we, do, if we go in and see a bad parking spot, as much as it would burn George and I's, you know, burn George <laughs> and I, we, uh, we don't post or do any negative. We provide a confidential report with recommendations, lists of funding sources, tell them how they can, you know, where they can find more pools of people with disability that are looking for jobs, mm -hmm. all those kind of things. So if you go to our website, abilitymb.ca, there's a uh, accessible MB component that has questions and answers for businesses about the reviews. And we've had a lot of feedback about that component that it's quite helpful because some people hear reviews and they think, oh no, we don't want to be embarrassed. It's actually not about that. We want to help. We, you know, it's not just just about the good thing to do you know George will tell us he'd love to be able to go to more downtown businesses in his city but that's so important but it makes economic sense there's tourists that want to come visit George mm -hmm. would like to spend his allowance like in accessible restaurants you know I'd like to spend mine down there too I tend to choose to go places that are accessible in honor to my mom I just find that's important because my dad mm -hmm. never took us anywhere to eat that we couldn't all go um, so mm -hmm. I, I think those are some really um, that's a really important campaign we've been pushing is about awareness of that free service because mm -hmm. we just want we have a vision for an accessible New Brunswick and we're not going to stop until we get there so Absolutely. George and I might be a little more gray when we get there but we're going to get there <laughs> we'll get there all together <laughs> absolutely um George would you like to add anything else any last words uh of advice or insight or anything for anybody that's listening uh and I know I saw in your email on the signature, sorry, I interrupted you. On, on the signature of your email, I saw you had made there always be a road. And I thought, you know, is there a significance to that? Yes. Well, that's, that's, that is just, uh, it's, it's a Tibetan farewell, Yul Bolson. And it, it translates to may there always be a road or may there always be a way. Mm -hmm. So if one, you know, Wherever you want to go, whatever you want to do, just put your mind to it and think of a way, think of different ways to get there. Think of, think of, you know, if, if you don't, if you first, you know, what's that saying? If you at first don't succeed, try again, you know, mm -hmm. so just keep trying. 
you know, don't don't let a dream die just because you didn't succeed the first time. Absolutely. It's uh, very inspirational. It's a great thing. I always keep that in mind, too. It's hard to keep going once you, you know, you've gotten a rejection or you've you failed at something. But absolutely, it's the persistence uh, to keep going. Um, I think that concludes our uh, discussion today or our podcast. Haley, um, I'm going to cut this and redo it. But could you just share your social medias? Uh, like, is it abilitymb.ca? Just a little like sentence. Yeah, ability. ability. Uh, www.abilitymb.ca and uh yeah that's and and, and our toll-free night number is 1-866-462-9555 and our email is info info at abilitynb.ca and uh, those are the three best ways people can reach us and they're checked daily so awesome and your social medias are ability nb like for for Facebook, Insta, and Twitter as well. So, uh, yeah, okay. we, uh, we're pretty proud of our big social media following. So, That's great. Perfect. Um, any questions for me or any final thoughts that you guys would like to add in? Just thank you for having us. I always enjoy chatting with George. We like to pick on each other. So it, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's been it, absolutely great. I, I loved uh, what we talked about today. And it gave me, I actually learned more. And, and I wasn't aware of all of the inaccessibilities that were in New Brunswick. But now I'm more aware of it. And, you know, I'm hoping to, or we're hoping to share this across so um, everybody's aware. And, uh, you know, we can all work towards the mission of, of Ability New Brunswick and be uh, a helping hand. Wonderful. Yeah, George is never grumpy, but get him out into an inaccessible area. <laughs> boy, oh boy. I don't blame you. I'm, yeah, I don't I'm, blame you. I'm the same. Um, yeah. I don't have a mobility condition, but I'm always testing mm -hmm. power door openers. And mm -hmm. people look at me and they're like, why are you misusing that? You don't have a disability. And I say, I'm testing it because if it's not working, I'm going right to the desk. So it's because yeah. I learned from my mom, it used to, we'd get her to the door and then I, it wouldn't work. And I'd be just almost in tears because heavy doors. And so uh, it's right. very personal to me. And mm -hmm. uh, I, uh, I enjoy being surrounded by this army with people like George that, uh, you know, that are, are just really, you know, bent on making change. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, can you, have you ever met a board member that has their, uh, the logo uh, tattooed on their arm? If you <laughs> want to know commitment, like I told Brad, I'm a, I'm like a vanilla kind of girl. George knows this. Um, but I really want a tattoo and I'm thinking about, I've been here 17 years. I should just get it done on my ankle or something. <laughs> yeah. So and then George and I can, stamp it. yeah, then we could do like a photo shoot with our tats, George. <laughs> oh, I'm already think that's going to be the campaign, Dana. That's uh, going to be the That campaign. would be a great one. <laughs> yeah. Tats for ability. I could just see it. Yeah. Oh, I, I, don't, it. <laughs> I don't even want to go there. <laughs> Donate twenty dollars to Ability, and Haley will get a, uh, a tattoo. A tattoo with the logo. Yeah, I don't know if it would catch on. The staff might do it because they know I'm vanilla, so I don't even have my ears pierced twice. Thank you very much for having us. Absolutely, it was my pleasure. Yeah. Nice to meet you uh, both, and I uh, hope you guys have a great uh, rest of your day. Okay, my pleasure. Thank take you, care. thank you, George. I'll log your volunteer Thanks, hours. Good luck with the interview. Right. Okay, take care. Thanks, George. Take care. Bye.